Today, it finally confirmed the 50-day moving average, uh, took out 3,300, took out 3,312. We'll talk about the individual pivots in a second. And now we saw really good aggressive uh, call buying coming in. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the Access to Trader .com, uh nightly update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Happy Thursday, everybody. Hope everybody had uh, a good day of trading. Sorry, there was no video last night. Uh, I thought my daughter had her finals in her uh, softball game. It turns out it was two out of three. So there's actually a game tonight, which we won yesterday. And my daughter is pitching. So right after I am done with here, I am going to the game. So kind of I uh, want to get you guys up to speed while there was no video yesterday. So let's talk about the tape. Uh, so this was going on today. You had a pretty good weakness or at least back testing today uh, in the banks. Banks had an incredible run uh, all the way back from the start of the year. So nobody should have any uh, any ill will or any uh, playing of violins for them. You know, oh, what was me? They had a great run. Absolutely great run. Uh, a lot of names. And again, you go through the whole list. Goldman Sachs. Uh, Citibank, pretty much anything with a financial uh, got hit today. And they are looking pretty soft for another move down tomorrow. I, I, I think the big story continues to be not the lack of participation in a lot of names, but a lot of names are participating on a smaller scale and is still, a st still attempting to kind of get their head above water. And you can, you can clearly tell slowly but surely how they're starting to peak out. And you look at names uh, like a Roku, right? Finally close over the 50-day moving average. It's very, very good. You have Zoom, although it, it hasn't been a smooth trip ever since uh, it had earnings. You can see it's literally one day away uh, from confirming supply again. Very, very uh, good and strong move as well. Again, a lot of names in the tech space still having problems, right? Look at Apple. Again, it's coming very, very close uh, to its 50-day moving average and kind of get, you know, kind of failing. Netflix, Again, you, you, you almost have to wonder what is going to get Netflix even going, you know, even on the strongest days uh, with NASDAQ up 100 plus points, Netflix still can get out of its own way. Uh, a name, for example, like Alibaba has been, a, has been an enigma, right? Great company, strong fundamentals, everything. I mean, look at this chart. You would think we were in a, in a three-year uh, bear market. But as we've said, there are some names that are waking up that are looking very, very good, and they finally broke out. And again, there is no bigger name. Uh, and we've been talking about the levels now pretty much in nausea on Amazon for, you know, for quite a couple of, you know, couple of weeks now, right? We, we knew about uh, the 50-day moving average. We knew about the 3,300. We knew about the 3,312. And the wonders of Amazon is, and this is why our, so many traders are, are just really fed up that, it, you know, this stock needs a split, right? Everybody knows that. It's only tradable literally three, four times a week. Last time the stock was tradable, if you guys remember, when it confirmed the 50-day moving average and went on this 250-point run. Today, it finally confirmed the 50-day moving average, uh, took out 3,300, took out 3,312. We'll talk about the individual pivots in a second. And now we saw really good aggressive uh, call buying coming in for the 3,400s, for the 3,450s. And this is your pot of gold now. So if the market continues to be good, and if you look at the queues, and again, we, they're just building and building and building over last Friday's remount uh, of the 50-day moving average, then Amazon, if everything goes well tomorrow, and if there is continued strength, uh, you could see a move all the way into this gap here, uh, this 3,400 possible level, right? If there's one more big move uh, in the NASDAQ. So Amazon looks great as well. Uh, remember remember, Z, uh, remember uh, ZS? We've been talking about ZS for like every day, it felt like, for a long, long time. And we're turning around and saying, well, when is this thing ever going to wake up again, right? It came out with earnings uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. This is, it's almost three weeks. Three weeks ago, it went, every day it's been on our watch list for literally three weeks. And I said, like, maybe today's the day. Maybe today's the day. Tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow's the day. Maybe tomorrow's the day. Today was finally the day. Uh, big breakout again uh, above this 200-day move it out, above this $200 area that's been rejected now uh, all the way since April. It finally took out the 200, closed pretty much at the highs of the day. 
uh, almost 206. If everything goes well and there's continued strength in the market, you could see a push uh, going all the way up to here into this 209 and 216 level. But the big news continues to be, and you can't even call these things meme stocks. Uh, I don't even know what to call them, but it feels like every single day there's just some crazy stock that just jumps out of nowhere. Everybody's jumping on board. Well, at least Chase is jumping on board. And they're making some ridiculous moves. So look at a name like GLTL today, right? <laughs> you know, we saw this thing at $6. Um, I had an appointment uh, late afternoon. I look up, I go, is this the same stock that we were just literally talking about $6? This thing went to 16 And if you think that's crazy, look at this one. ORPH, right? ORPH. This thing literally went from six bucks to what, 77? So yeah, the craziness is still here. Um, a lot of people are, you know, chasing these things. A lot of people are making money on these things, right? This is your, I mean, this is really not my thing. Uh, these things scare me half to death. But if you are participating in these things, I, I hope you're really doing very, very well. Because the last thing you want to do is, is take an opportunity that's presented to you that literally comes once every twice, three times uh, every, you know, every two, three years and not really, you know, not really taking advantage of so if this is your thing. Again, be careful. Awesome that you're, you're, you're making money on these things. If you're taking advantage of it, God bless. But just remember, guys, always sell when you want to, not sell when you have to. And this is kind of a, a perfect example of the stock going from uh, six to seventy five and it closed. Uh, at twenty-one dollars, just absolute uh, madness. But from the from the rhyme and reason uh, part of the market is internals continue to be healthy. Uh, there's a lot of names that are setting up very very well. And the most important part is, I believe everybody is participating. You know, if you're a small small cow player, and I and I tweeted this out uh, a little while ago, I said this is probably in the last two weeks. This is probably the most smaller price names I've traded probably in the last, you know, eight to 10 years. Um, it's just been, it's just because the, the beta market's been giving us like maybe one move, maybe two moves a day, right? But everything else is starting to wake up. And while speculation money is out there, uh, you do have to do uh, your damnedest to kind of make sure uh, that you are at least taking advantage to the best of your ability. So here's some names that I definitely like uh, going into tomorrow. Look at us as Jen, right? Uh, Seattle uh, Genomics uh, big had a big range break here a couple of days ago, and it stopped right at the linear regression line, right? Stocks don't usually stop randomly. Everybody see why it stopped here? This, this uh, linear regression line, 159.30s. If this thing can just reclaim this 159.50, 160 area, you could see a move to like 62, 63 and slowly start moving. So this is a nice little range here. It held, it's digesting its gains from the previous day. That looks uh, pretty good. Um, I like this. Um, I kind of like this. Um, I, I kind of like this. Um, I like Adobe, right? I think Adobe looks pretty good. Um, I think Adobe looks pretty good. Pretty aggressive breakout today. It took out a range uh, from April. Really, really strong, aggressive move. Uh, here's the names in the software space. Uh, if there's any weakness tomorrow in the tape, use the weakness uh, to try to get into this thing on a 60-minute dip. And again, if you don't know what a 60-minute dip is, if you follow these trend lines, they're pretty orderly. Every time it hits uh, the 60-minute channel, it bounces, 60-minute 60, 60 channel, it bounces, 60-minute channel, it bounces. So we want to see some of these lower levels if there is weakness tomorrow for a possible dip by there. Uh, obviously, same thing with Amazon. Amazon went absolutely nuts. Uh, for all you guys who are holding Amazon, fantastic move. Hopefully, there's a second wave of buying into tomorrow, but it's kind of the same note as uh, Adobe, right? You know, if there is any type of weakness tomorrow uh, in shares of Amazon, you, you know, use advantage, right? Again, when the stock breaks out out of a long, long channel, the weakness in the morning is an opportunity to pick up cheap shares that emotional sellers are getting out of. And if these, if you can catch it on the bottom of the channel, there's a good chance or not you're going to have a lot of shorts getting trapped, eager shorts getting trapped and moving it back uh, to red to green. Uh, Zoom, I like eventually for a big macro breakout. Uh, this is maybe a day away, maybe two days away, but it's starting to look really, really good. Uh, look at Roku as well, right? Roku, it, not, that, not that it's there macro, but at least today it reclaimed a 50-day moving average. So I want to keep an eye on this thing uh, for some continued 
moving strength as well. And again, in the same line as ZS that I've been talking about any day, any day, any day. Well, I've been talking about Dell now for like three weeks as well. Maybe it's going to be tomorrow. I said this yesterday, the day before, the day before, the day before. Oh, two weeks ago, right? Maybe tomorrow's the day. But you could see how this thing is shaping up. And I have a feeling eventually when it does take out the top of this channel, it should at least put up a, a, a ZS uh, type of move like we saw today. So uh, let's talk about tomorrow uh, for today's pivots. Obviously, uh, I am definitely uh, bullish going into tomorrow. There's a lot of good setups. Uh, but the, at the start of the morning, uh, at morning strategy, I definitely put up, uh, I definitely put a lot of pivots, well, I would say a lot, but I put three pivots uh, on the feed just in case we were going to pull. Because if you guys notice, the market was, the NASDAQ 100 was very, very weak despite its strength in the indexes. You saw a lot of weakness in the last several days. Tesla, uh, NVIDIA had a, had a very, very important area today that it held. Uh, Netflix as well. So I was actually watching some names to the downside that just really didn't confirm. But again, that's a whole different story. As you can see here, Tesla uh, 594, if it builds below, it can flush. Obviously, Tesla didn't do that. Again, this is the big mover of the day. Uh, Amazon 3300 and 3312. Uh, big areas need to confirm. Here goes Amazon, right? Here is Amazon. Took out the 3300, took out the 3312, and closed at the 3350s. Really, really big move here. I expect. Uh, I'd love to see some more uh, activity there today. Uh, for tomorrow, back to the upside. Square uh, never got down to the 209 level. Uh, Netflix, it took out the, the, the 484, only went down like $1.50, not a big move at all uh, before it retraced. It took out the 84 area, went down to like 82, and then uh, bounced back like everything else. Didn't, didn't really uh, do anything there. Uh, CCXI, I still like this thing, didn't confirm. Uh, Bark 1275 13 needs to build. Not a big move at all. Uh, I thought this thing was going to give a bigger move, but not a big move at all. It took out the 1275 uh, 13 area. You know, it went to like 1350 and then came back uh, very, very aggressively, like a lot of these other names. Uh, WKEY never got close to the $9 area. AMRX uh, $6 needs to build. Went to 620. I still like it. This is the first close uh, over the $6 area. It looks pretty good. Uh, Dell, obviously, again, I've been saying this for a week. Excuse me, it should be three weeks or two weeks. Uh, but again, not there. Uh, ZS was really good. We caught this thing right away. Uh, ZS, $200 break, right? Here's the $200 break. Again, closed pretty much the highs, 205 and change. Still like it for higher prices for tomorrow. Uh, Apple never got close to the 28 and a half, 29 area. Apron was really good. Again, here's what you know, I've been talking about, especially uh, option flow. For smaller cap names, uh, we saw really, you know, pretty good one after another, two, three, four times in a row on Apron, Blue Apron. Uh, they were coming for, I think, the seven and a halves. They even came for the tens. Uh, apron, apron, six dollars needs to build. And as soon as the option flow kicked in, uh, the equity started kicking in as well. And look at the move here. It went from literally from six all the way to six sixty, six seventy, excuse me, on one candle, right? So it took out this whole six channel. You see this? Took out this whole channel here. Look at this move. It went all the way to 670. Congratulations for all you guys uh, who caught Blue Apron. Again, take on the way up on Amazon. Uh, apron, big, big move on Apron. Right, they were coming for the July 10 calls. Uh, very, very big move at all. New highs, 203 on deck. Later it becomes 206 on deck on that as well. Again, this is, you know, here any close over 3,300, huge. 3440s is gone. Uh, excuse me, 3440s and 3470. That's the measure of potential. Uh, there as well, AMRX new highs as well. And there was a bunch of uh, bounce plays there as well. So look, we're, we're set up for tomorrow. Uh, a lot of good setups for tomorrow's session. The only question again, uh, every single day is number one, what happens in the overnight uh, cash market? If there's any macro news, if there's anything at all. But again, guys, just remember, do not anticipate, right? If you like XYZ, wait for it to confirm, right? If the, if the pivot is 15, don't buy it at $14.90 assuming it's going to break $15. The reason why levels are there are to guide you so you don't have to guess. You don't have to uh, forecast. You don't have to pray and hope in God it goes that level. Let it go through that level, right? Let it go through that level. Let it put a new high. Let it put a new base. Start building over that level. That's how you know the stock is good. So what's the difference if you're along the stock at $14.90 or $15.10? If $15 is the level, then $15 is the level that it needs to build. So I, I see a lot of new traders um, still trying to anticipate the trade, uh, to anticipate a trade 
uh, that it's what's about to happen. We're not Miss Cleo, guys. Don't, you know, don't forecast. Don't, we don't have crystal balls. Let the levels play out. Let them confirm organically. Guys, have a great night. I'll see a lot of you guys tomorrow. Take care.